In today's video, I am doing a collaboration to share some information on the teaching profession and as far as it goes with salary information and how we teachers make ends meet. Hello and welcome to Pencils and Magic Wands. My name is Marieli Sanchez and I am a fourth grade teacher teaching in South Florida. So in today's video, I am doing a collaboration along with LaTanya from Smarty Style on YouTube and on Instagram and Megan Forbes from Too Cool for Middle School also on YouTube and Instagram. So we wanted to do this video to share some information on the teaching profession and as far as it goes with salary information and how we teachers make ends meet in order to provide for ourselves and our family. This falls in line with the Red for Ed movement, which is why I'm wearing a red shirt today in support of this movement and also in solidarity. So both LaTanya and Megan came up with a set of questions for us to answer. And if you see me looking down, I am just looking down referring to my questions along with my pay stub. Not that I'm going to share any specific information for my pay stub, but just so that I can address some of the questions that are being asked of us. So I want to start by saying that I am so proud of all the teachers that have been involved in the Red for Ed movement and Florida teachers are with you. In Florida, we are a right to work state, which means that teachers in our state cannot protest our jobs. If we were to protesting based on salary or any other thing related to our teaching contract, we do lose our job. So my heart goes out to all the teachers that are able to go ahead and get involved in some kind of movement for the Red for Ed. And I hope that this video educates anyone interested in teaching or education so that you can see how teachers all around the country and maybe even the world differ from one place to another. So here we go. I'm gonna start with question number one. So question number one, what state do you live in? Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I live in Florida. Question number two, how many members are in your immediate household? Now in my immediate household, it is myself, my son, both of my parents and my uncle, who's my mom's brother. So for a while, it was just myself and my son, but my parents actually lost their home a couple years ago, so they are also now living with me. Question number three, are you a single or a double income household? I am the only person who actually has a job in my household, so I will have to answer single income household. My parents and my uncle do get their social security checks, because they are retired, but for the most part, I'm the only one with an actual professional career that I get paid, and I'm the one that carries the bulk of the bills in my household. Question number four, do you own or rent? I actually own my house. In South Florida, it is actually cheaper for me to buy a house and pay a mortgage than to rent. Rent in South Florida is very expensive. I actually cannot afford rent if I were to find a house that was similar to my house, so I do own my house. Question number five, what is your highest level of education? Does your education level affect your pay in your district? So my highest level of education right now is a master's, and I am currently enrolled in my doctoral program. I am getting a PhD in curriculum and instruction. I am not done with that yet. I am currently in dissertation mode, so I finished all my coursework. I passed my comprehensive exams. So now it's just for me to sit down and do my dissertation, type it up, and present it to the committee that is part of my dissertation committee. So that's where I am right now as far as education level goes. Now, does my education level affect pay in my district? It does. My district actually pays teachers $3,100 on top of your base salary if you have a master's. If you have a specialist, my district pays teachers $5,150 in addition to your base salary, and that's yearly. And once I complete my doctorate, my base salary will have an additional $7,200. Now that is not cumulative. So right now I am getting $3,100 on top of my base salary because of my master's, but once I finish my doctorate program, I'm not gonna get 3,100 plus 7,200. I'm going to substitute the 3,100 to 7,200 on top of my base salary. I hope that answers that question. 
And I want to add also that my district does provide partial reimbursement for tuition for teachers. You just have to remember to file the paperwork right after you finish your semester so that you do get part of that tuition back, which you could use to repay your loans. Question number six, how much did it cost for you to attain your degrees? Are you still paying for your education? Student loans? I have to say my undergraduate on top of my master's and now my doctorate, it is way too much for me to even mention. I do know that my total debt is over 100,000 because of the education that I have gotten. And I am currently not paying student loans because they're in forbearance since I am in school. But once I graduate, I cannot even imagine how much my monthly payment is going to be to repay back all those loans. Just thinking about it gives me some anxiety, so I have to figure out a way to make sure I tackle that once I get there. But yeah, it is very scary. <laughs> Question number seven, how is your salary schedule structured? So basically, the starting salary right now for our district is for brand new teachers with a bachelor's degree is $41,000. Now, when I started back in 2001, I want to say my base salary, my starting salary was around $33,000. And now new teachers that graduate with their bachelor's can join our district and start at $41,000. Now, where am I as far as that goes? Uh, after 17 years of teaching, I'm going to tell you right now, my salary is less than $50,000. Even though I've been teaching for 17 years in my district and I have a master's. So... The max salary for teachers in my district is $72,720. That is the maximum salary that teachers can get in my district. Now, as far as how that salary increases a year, we have a union that is working for us and hopefully we are able to keep our union because the state passed a legislation that says that any unions that have less than 50% membership will be decertified, meaning that we will be left without a union. And our union is close to 50% membership, but not quite there. We hope that we are able to reach that by July 1st, because if we don't, then our union could be decertified. And I don't even wanna to start to think about all the negative impacts that we'll have in our career as far as benefits and salary and all that goes. But our union renegotiates our contract every year, even though our union may agree with the district that the teachers are going to get a certain percentage increase which is what they're doing now every year we get a certain percentage increase added to our salary that can be ratified every year because every year in the summer they have to meet to readdress the salary schedule so sometimes we are left up in the air not knowing exactly how our salary is going to increase or if it's going to increase before they switch to the percentage increase our salaries were based on steps so the steps were determined by how many years you had experience however because again that could be ratified every year i was stuck at step maybe 10 for like five years or so so i was stuck at a lower pay than i should have been at because the district was not able to provide that salary increase for teachers so yeah, sometimes we just don't know where salary is going to go. And knowing that society just keeps moving forward and the cost of living just keeps going higher, it makes it really difficult for teachers if you are stuck in a similar salary for years while everything around you just keeps going up in price. Question number nine. Do you supplement your income in any way? How? Now, I have not supplemented my income in any way recently. In the past, I have done tutoring private tutoring where I would just go to different people's houses and provide tutoring for the students there. I also worked summer school one year, but it just wasn't for me. And I have thought this summer to get a part-time job because it is very difficult to make ends meet in a household of five people. And I am basically the sole provider. So one way that i am planning on supplementing my salary hopefully because you never know how that goes either is making more products for teachers pay teachers and making them available in my store and hoping that that does help supplement my income a little bit so that i can offset different costs such as groceries or bills in the house which are the priority question number 10 how much money does your district give you for supplies at the beginning of the year do they provide basic supplies throughout the school year 
So my district actually doesn't give us money, it's our state. So in Florida, all full-time teachers in a public school get about $280 a year, sometime around September, October. And last year they had us use Class Wallet as a way for us to make purchases through there, through their vendors so that they can be shipped to our school. And that way our money is used for educational purposes. My school at the beginning of every year does supply us with basic supplies such as pens, scissors for the teachers, not for the students. Anything that we need in our teacher desk, they provide. We are able to sometimes ask for wish list items and if the school does have the budget, they will get it for us. In the past, our school has also provided us with copy paper. We didn't really have that this past year, but I'm crossing my fingers that we're able to get it. If not, that comes out of our pocket. Sometimes I, I am able to ask for things in the classroom and if the principal does have the budget, the principal usually purchase it if they know that it is helpful for the school. Our PTA in my particular school is very involved and really helps teachers. So if you are a member of our school PTA, they give us about $100 or $150 a year that basically we can just turn in receipts and they'll reimburse us for anything that we bought for the classroom. Our PTA also has mini grants where teachers can apply twice a year for an idea that they would like to implement with their students and the PTA, if they grant that idea, will reimburse the teacher for any supplies that they purchased in order to implement that classroom idea. In the past, I've also used Donors Choose to get a lot of the technology and books that are in my classroom. So those are the different ways that I have been able to add supplies to my classroom and a lot of them do come from out of my pocket as well. So we teachers do spend a lot of money back into our classroom and our students. So <laughs> yeah, it's all part of the real teaching career. Question number 11. Do you have additional deductions taken from your paycheck, such as retirement, union dues, etc.? I do. And I have my pay stub right here so that I can actually tell you how much is deducted. So my deductions per paycheck, I have pre-tax deductions and post-tax deductions. And these deductions not only include my medical insurance, which the district does pay most of my personal medical insurance, but because I have a son, I have to also pay for his medical insurance. So that adds to my total cost for insurance. So it's not just my medical, basic medical, I also have vision and dental added to that in addition. And I also have life insurance and my retirement and my FRS, which is the Florida Retirement System contribution, teachers in Florida do contribute to our retirement. So every paycheck I have to pay about $63 per paycheck to contribute to my Florida Retirement System. On top of that, I also take out money for my 403B and I also have legal insurance that I also pay plus my union dues and I also have insurance through my union dues, additional life insurance in there as well. So pre-tax, I get deducted $305.70 from each paycheck. Post-tax is $72.09 per paycheck. So as you can see, it's about $400 per paycheck that I get deducted from my total salary. Question number 12. Do you feel your current salary is enough for you to make ends meet and live comfortably? No, I do not feel that. I am living paycheck to paycheck. And sometimes each paycheck is not enough to meet all the bills that I have to pay and be able to provide for my family. So it is very stressful sometimes when you are literally pennies away from being on the negative side in your bank account. But that's just the reality of life. And you know what, I have to be hopeful and optimistic that things will get better and I am trying to find different ways to branch out and see how else I can supplement my income and be able to be on kind of like a budget to kind of help myself as I continue on in my teaching profession. Question number 13, are there any financial goals that you're still working towards? I am definitely working towards being debt free. Even though right now it may be a little hard because I don't have a cushion, but it can happen. I can make it happen. It just, I have to be a little bit more wiser when it comes to my investments and how I budget my money. So 
I definitely want to be debt free, like not have any student loans. I want to be able to pay off my house, pay off my car. I want to basically just have the basic bills that I need to pay and be able to live comfortably. Right now, I am not living comfortably, <laughs> but I am going to stay optimistic that things will get better in the end. But yeah, it's pretty tough sometimes. I, I'm just keeping it real and being honest. And the last question, what is the biggest piece of financial advice you would offer to someone considering teaching? So my biggest piece of financial advice is to do your research. Research how much the pay salary is for the district or state or city that you're thinking about teaching in. Also research how that salary increases each year. Definitely look into the cost of living for the area that you are planning to work in. I do definitely want to recommend that you do set up a budget and some kind of financial safety net so that in case you are faced with some time that you are not able to pay for certain things, you do have that safety net maybe saved up in your bank account for those types of moments. For example, teachers are 10 month employees in my district and in most districts. We don't get paid for 12 months. We get paid for 10 months out of the school year. So in the summer, now that we are out, we don't get paid for the summer break. So a lot of teachers do have a hard time paying for bills and being able to live comfortably in the summer because they don't get paid in the summer. Now, what my district allows us to do is that they provide for us a way to get part of each paycheck taken out and saved away so that we still get a check every two weeks so that it's almost like if we are working but we're not working so this summer i do get summer paychecks but that's money that's been taken away from my base salary each and every paycheck so yeah on top of my pre-tax and post-tax deductions i also have that taken out of my account and let me give you an idea how much is taken out each paycheck so each paycheck they take out about 460 dollars per paycheck in order for me to have a check in the summer. Not all teachers participate in the defer payment option. Some of them do keep all of the money throughout the 10 months, but then in the summer, they either save it themselves or they get an additional part-time job and able to be able to cover their cost of living expenses throughout the summer months. So that's just something else to keep in mind because most of the time teachers, at least in the United States, are not 12-month employees, we're 10-month employees. And we have to make sure we provide some kind of way to still be able to supplement our income in order to meet the expenses that we have every summer when we're not working. All right, that's the end of the questions. And I hope I was able to shed some light into the teaching profession and how we get paid and how that goes about and things like that. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And also feel free to share how your teachers get paid in your district or area where you live because I always like to learn a little bit more about teachers in different areas of the country or the world. And I hope this video was informational to you if you're considering teaching or if you're a teacher or you're interested in education. I am looking forward to watching all of the other videos that will be posted along with this collaboration. And I hope you enjoyed it in some way or another. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I want to wish my very best to all the teachers out there. I know that our job is not easy, but it's so rewarding in so many ways. We all didn't go into teaching for the money, definitely. But it will be nice to be able to one day be compensated in the way that I feel we all deserve. Have a beautiful, magical day, and don't forget to smile. See you next time.